Hi, this is Tony, and we're back on the bench. And this evening, uh, we're going to be getting into a, another old Penn Classic here. So this is the Penn Surfmaster Model 250. And it's, uh, it's a pretty solid reel. Uh, it's been around a long time. And, uh, you know, the, the Surfmaster series is, has definitely caught in its fair share of fish. And so, uh, you know, we're going to be doing a, kind of a basic service on this reel. Uh, as you can see, it, it looks pretty clean. So, you know, I don't think we're going to be getting into a lot of uh, detail work, which is good because that's, that's usually pretty time consuming. So, uh, but we're going to have a look and we're going to see uh, what we can do. And we're just going to clean up the innards and put it back together and get it ready to do some fishing, hopefully. So, so the Surfmaster series, uh, basically Penn offered as a, uh, a as a, a, an alternative uh, for folks that, that couldn't really afford the squitter, basically. The squitter was kind of the hot rod model. The Surfmaster was somewhat of a step down, but still had a lot of the, the standard components. Uh, it, it just didn't have some of the extra bells and whistles, basically. So, um, you know, but as you can see, I mean, all these pieces and parts are, are very, uh, you know, they're clean. You got this nice uh, nickel-plated stainless steel uh, bridge here, any centric uh, pieces and whatnot. You know, so these are really clean pieces here. So... Um, this reel happens to have an aluminum spool, uh, which is nice. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you know, everything in here, you know, looks pretty clean. And so what I'm probably going to do is I'm just going to try to clean this up the best I can without getting too carried away with, uh, some of the detail work just because frankly i mean this is a very clean reel and uh, when when the reels are clean you know they they don't need a lot now one thing i'm noticing here and this is important so whoever had this reel uh before it came into my possession uh they they put the wrong screw down here you see how it sticks out there it should be flush like this one and so that's uh, that's one thing that's a miss. And so we're just going to take that out right now. We're going to try to deal with that problem. Now, that screw could be tied up in one of the frame posts, the appropriate one, or it, it could have just went missing, and, and that was all that they had kicking around or that they could get their hands on. So I'm going to see what we can do, do to remedy that. Hopefully with the help of uh, some parts here. But this is what happens, uh, you know, sometimes when you work on, on some of these old, uh, old reels, you, you find pieces and parts that were put back in the wrong place. I'd say uh, that one's a little shorter right here, so I think we're going to run with that and see, see how that holds up. For us here, I'm just going to apply a little little bead of oil on that thread there, just for good measure. Now, if this reel had a little bit more corrosion damage and stuff like that, I would be taking apart all these pieces and components. But you know what? It looks very very clean, and uh, I, I don't suspect that there's a lot of problems there. But I am just going to kind of double check these screws and make sure that they're nice and snug. Okay, so that takes care of, of that problem right there. So, and uh, just to be consistent, being that I have another brand new screw, I'm just going to swap out this one just because you can see this one's quite a bit shinier than this one. And I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with this reel. It, uh, it came into my possession a while back. It, it was relatively cheap, and I wanted to do a video on it, basically. But I'm not sure if I'll uh, hang on to it and actually use it for fishing, or, or if I'll resell it someday or something like that. But at least this way, that looks a little, a little better with those two. So, okay. While we're in here, we're just going to apply our blue grease here 
real quick. Just do a little dab of that on our on our bushing, non-handle side bushing. You don't need to overdo it, just just enough to get in there. But yeah, you want those screws to be nice and flush down in there because that's how your line can get tangled. If if they stick out too far, like so, then uh, that's that's how you you run into that problem. But all in all, I'd say all these pieces and parts here look pretty good. I'm just gonna take a quick look at these screws here. All these look okay. Yeah, everything there looks pretty good. So we're just gonna clean off our spool shaft right here. And this all looks great as well. And then I just like to take a little bit of steel wool to that shaft and just just smooth that out the best that we can. And then once again, we'll take, we'll take our blue grease, just a tiny, tiny little brush here. Just get enough of it on there, like so. Okay, so the only other thing that we will do is we'll do a little bit of blue grease here on the clicker as well. I like to do that because that is a, a metal piece that moves. So put our spool back into place. And that all looks good. We'll do a little bit of oil here on our take apart thread right there just for good measure because sometimes that that is prone to to rusting and if that if those threads rust then you can't keep your your handle side assembly on so i'm just going to put this off to the side for right now because we're done with all that part of the reel but as you can see that's all real easy now we're just going to get into the business end here and we're going to take all these pieces and parts out of out of the handle side plate. Have a look at our gear set and see what kind of shape it's in. But yeah, the 250 was only around until I think uh, the late 70s and it, uh, it didn't have as long of a run as the 200. It's, uh, it's baby brother. The 200 model was the equivalent size of the 140 uh, Squitter, and the, uh, the the 250 Surfmaster here is the equivalent size of uh, of a Jigmaster 500, basically. And uh, my guess is that uh, Penn probably didn't have a very long run with the 250 because a lot of the the features that were offered in the 250 mainly the size of the reel uh was was already given uh in the jig master down the road in the 50s and the jig master also offered uh, the high speed gear set it had the four to one gear ratio whereas this had the standard uh, th three to one ratio so those are some of the differences and i have a video on those comparisons of those two reels as well uh, but I, I, I'm guessing that's probably why the 250 did not uh, stick around for too long in the run. But either way, it's a great reel, very solid reel, great size reel for all different kinds of fishing. So we have four screws here, and we're just going to take all these out. Notice I like to keep all these little parts trays around. Um, I, I do like to separate the parts, like I'm kind of doing here to a degree sometimes. I don't like to throw them all together in one container usually, but sometimes I will uh, I will do that. But I do recommend having a schematic on hand if, uh, if, if you're getting into working on one of these and you've never done it before. It's just a good thing to, to have around. Okay, so we're going to take uh, our bridge assembly apart here. And, uh, you know, all this is pretty clean in here. It's a, it's a little on the dry side, perhaps, but it's it's really not that bad. So I'm just going to throw all these pieces in here, basically. And actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab a different uh, 
different tray here. We put all these these pieces and parts in here. So we got our eccentric lever and our pinion yoke and springs. And sometimes you gotta you gotta work your way around this a little bit to get this eccentric to come out, but that'll come out eventually with a little bit of work. This one's being a little on the stubborn side though. Okay. It came out now, so I'm just going to put all these pieces and parts in this little tray right here. But you know, this is all very clean, so that's good for us. We got our dog, and then we got our gear assembly here, and our drag kit. And we're going to see what kind of shape this drag kit is in. We're going to see if it's got leather washers or fiber washers that they need to be replaced or. Uh, I don't know the history of this reel at all. It did come with the original box, and it's an older box. So I'm assuming it's a it's an older reel. Probably either 40s or or 50s generation, I would guess, off the top of my head. Sometimes it's hard to get these these pieces off of these bridges sometimes like what I'm experiencing right now and usually the reason for that is because these threads get they, they get either rusted or tarnished a little bit like you see right there so. I'm probably going to do is, oh, there we go. Okay, so now we're getting all those pieces off. Got our main gear off. And then there is this hard fiber washer here. Now I'm going to try gently just to kind of pry this up, but I don't want to break it. You know, the goal with, with this reel is to not have to dump a bunch of new parts into it, basically. Um, it's, it's not exactly a showpiece reel, but... It's, you know, uh, we're, we're trying to do it, keep, do, do it on the cheap as much as possible, basically, just for good measure on the, uh, on the pocketbook, basically. So, yeah, I mean, looking at these drag washers, I mean, they don't really look that bad. I do suspect that these are leather. Yeah, they are. And they're in very good shape for their age. So, you know, uh, being that I don't know if I'm ever really going to use this reel or not, I'm just going to uh, probably place those back in. And uh, if I wind up selling it, uh, then I, I will, uh, you know, make a note of that to <clears throat> whoever's buying it that, uh, that it has, you know, leather washers. And, you know, there could be a... A little bit lesser of a shelf life uh, with those than than the uh, the carbon tex washers okay so now we're going to take our our shaft out of our our bridge or our, our sleeve our bridge sleeve off the uh, shaft and sometimes I have to hit this gently with a little hammer to get that that pin out here but you know this is I'm actually going to get this one off camera into the vise here. You should be able to take just a little, a little hole punch to that, that, uh, that pin. You should be able to tap that out. Should stick out like that, basically. And pull that out with a pair of needle nose. Pull 
pull your pin out take your sleeve off and yeah i mean this is pretty gummed up in here for sure so you know we're gonna we're gonna take that out now there's also i'm also seeing this little kind of like this little spacer right here as well and i'm not 100 percent sure but uh, that might have been something that, that was part of the bridge assembly of the time. I do believe that there were some modifications made to the Surfmaster series over time. It definitely, uh, I believe it does belong there, uh, you know, on, on maybe the older uh, models. But either way, we're just going to clean up all these parts and pieces here the best that we can. And so we're just going to... Gonna take some some penetrating lubricant to this and just kind of clean this off here. And then I like to take some Q-tips. Yeah, if you go to mysticparts.com, you can download all the schematics for all of these uh, models. And they usually have uh, tips and, and tricks and hints in, in, the, in those pages of, uh, of uh, different generations and, and where they made some changes on, on certain models and stuff like that. I'm just going to clean off all this old grease on here because we don't want any of that to be present. Clean it up the best that we possibly can. And then I like to just take some steel wool to this shaft here, basically. Clean that off real good. Okay, so we got our bridge assembly, like so. And then sometimes there's some little grit and oil and dirt and dust in there. Just inside this shaft and... Sometimes you can just take a little, little punch or something like that to it and just kind of clean it out the best that you can. And okay. So we can take our blue grease to our shaft. Like so. And put our sleeve back on we're going to put our pin back into place like so tap that back in got to make sure that this is flush with the threads otherwise you won't get your your gear back on there and it's still sticking out just a little bit be pretty flush there okay now I should have done this uh, sooner but I want to I want to hose all this down with some penetrating fluid here and loosen up any any rust or anything like that I am seeing I'm not sure if it's rust it could be some some old grease on there but we're gonna we're gonna find out here soon what all that's about just gonna get all these pieces and parts in here And I'm going to let that sink in a little bit. And while we're here, we're just going to clean off our, our leather washers. Yeah, these are actually in great shape for, for what they are. Got our hard fiber washer. I'm going to put that back on here. Like so. And we're just going to have a look at our, our main gear here. Yeah, you see a lot of that was just old grease and it's, it's already loosened up. 
And I've said this before in other videos, I, I find that when it comes to penetrating fluids and cleaning up your pieces and parts, you know, don't be afraid to, to let stuff sit uh, even overnight if you're really working on loosening things up. You know, this reel isn't very dirty, uh, so, you know, it's not giving me a really hard time. But if you're dealing with like a lot of corroded parts or rusted parts, uh, things of that sort, you know, just uh, let let that stuff work. You know, a lot of people think sometimes, you know, like they're using WD-40 or they're using power lube or whatever it is that they're using, but then they can't break something free in a couple of minutes or something like that. Well, you know, there's there's usually not anything wrong with the product compared to how long it's actually sitting. And I'll admit, you know, WD-40 is great for a number of different things, and sometimes it, it doesn't quite cut it to break certain stuff loose. But it's just kind of a rule of, of thumb that I use is to, uh, you know, let stuff sit if, if you're really trying to break free uh, a lot of stuff uh, that's that's beaten up on, on the metals and stuff, you know. Now, I like to take this toothbrush here and uh, just clean out the main gear teeth, basically. And you can see, you know, there's there's quite a bit of stuff locked up in there. I mean, it's not bad, but it's definitely worth cleaning. And I've had people ask me questions, you know, about different lubricants and stuff like that. You know, there's lots of good stuff out there, and then there's lots of other stuff that, you know, it's like, well... You know, it works, but, you know, given the amount of money that you paid for it, you know, you may not consider it next time kind of thing. Um, and I do have a video on on the, the stuff that I like to use mostly. And right now I'm using this can of Power Lube here. You can pick this up at Napa Auto Parts. Uh, you could probably find it in some other various hardware stores, I would imagine. Um, but it's pretty good stuff, and it doesn't smell very strong, which is something that I like. Okay, so the, our main gear is pretty pretty clean, you know, for the most part. There's a little bit of rust damage in there, it looks like, but it's minimal. So we're going to run with that. We're going to put our, our main gear back on. Mm, that pin is still sticking out a little bit too much, I guess. Just want to make sure you don't mess up the threads uh, when you're doing this, basically. Try it again. Okay. And we're going to take out our, our the rest of our drag kit here. And, I mean, these, these washers are pretty clean, I'd say. Now, I'm not going to use any star drag grease uh, with these uh, leather washers because they're leather and they're not designed to, to have that on them. Now, there is some tarnish here on this, so I'd like to get rid of that. So I just like to take some steel wool to that washer, basically. You know, some people like to uh, just change out the whole drag kit, um, which you certainly can do. You know, it's it's going to run you if you changed out all the metal washers and all the fiber washers or the, you know, the, the actual drag uh, washers, all these black ones. I mean, you know, it's, it's probably going to run you about six, seven bucks. <clears throat> Um, but you know, if, if there's really no need to, you know, the, as long as the metal washers are clean of, of debris and dirt, rust, all that kind of stuff, then it's, it's fine. Okay. So we've got all of our drag, uh, washers here in place. And so... The basic uh, standard is we got leather washer, metal washer, leather washer, keyed washer, leather washer, and metal washer. Okay, 
We're going to put these in sequence like so. Leather, metal, These, these are a real challenge here for sure, getting back on there, but they'll, they'll go with a little bit of persistence. Keyed washer, but this is a standard drag set here obviously uh, for, for a lot of standard conventional pen reels of this generation. There we have that, and then we've got our spring washer, and it's it's got a little bit of tarnish on there, just try to clean that up a little bit. Okay, put our spring washer back into place, and that's our bridge assembly with our drag kit. And so I'm just gonna slap some blue grease here on our main drag. I'm not going to overdo it though, we just want enough. Like so. Okay, that's all good to go. And now, in here, you know, I think I'm just going to take some power lube to all of these, these little housings in here real quickly. And just kind of let that do its magic and then I just like to take the q-tip and you know it's it's definitely dirty you know but it's it's not all loaded up with a bunch of you know gunk and stuff and and, and normally you know that comes from over lubing you know the reel and, and that can actually affect the, the functionality of the reel is by over lubing and over greasing and stuff like that so you, de you definitely don't want to be doing that I am very much so kind of taking my sweet time uh, with this, but uh, I, I find that it's it's good to go slow uh, with, with these, with all these reels. Even if they're reels that you're familiar with, uh, just going slow is, is kind of helpful, I find. And then that way you're not overlooking too much stuff usually. Okay, so that's all cleaned up in there pretty good, I think. So we're just going to have a look at the rest of our pieces and parts here real quick. We'll take all these out. And it looks like they're all cleaning up pretty good, I'd say. I know the dog spring sounded a little on the weak side, so we'll try to bend it back a little bit. There's a lot of tarnish on this uh, pinion yoke here. It would appear so we're going to try to get rid of some of that a lot on this side here for sure yeah i'd say that this reel's probably been sitting for a number of years i'm guessing one of the reasons why i do these videos is uh, because a lot of people are just unaware of the fact that these reels can be serviced sometimes and uh, unfortunately there's not a lot of uh, shops out there anymore that do service these reels i know pen still offers service for some models that are more of the vintage era but there, there, there's a lot that they won't service anymore, I don't believe. And a lot of the mom and pop tackle shops, uh, you know, are, are becoming less and less these days, unfortunately, you know, with, with people that, that are familiar with this kind of work. So that's all pretty good there. I'm just going to take some steel wool to the eccentric jack here springs look good dog and dog spring look good now i definitely want to clean up my my pinion gear here. toothbrushes are great tools when you're doing this kind of work you just really can't beat them
And there might be some folks that say, oh, this is too much work. Uh, you know, they just want to get a new reel. Well, that's that's valid too. Um, you know, but for, for folks that that do like using, you know, their, their old reels, you know, that's that's basically, you know, what a lot of these these videos that I do are mainly intended for. And parts are becoming harder and harder, of course, to come by. Uh, for a lot of these, I go to mysticparts.com a lot. That's kind of the official pen parts source these days. eBay is a great source for certain parts if you know what you're looking for. All right, so we got two fully threaded screws and two partially threaded screws. And we're just going to beat up on some oil on these real quick here. And we're going to get back into our reassembly here. So we're going to put our springs back into place. Pinion yoke springs. And then before we get too carried away, we're going to do our blue grease on our bushing in here. As well as on the eccentric roller right there. And then we've got pinion gear, pinion yoke. And uh, I'm just going to brush this gently with our blue grease. Mm, got away from me there. Should look something like that. Real simple. Put our pinion yoke back on top of those springs, like so. Then this is the part where we want to want to make sure we have a little bit of grease just kind of around these corners right here on the yoke. We're going to put our eccentric jack back on top. Should look something like that. And while we're in here, we're just going to do a little bit of blue grease on top here. Just because those are all moving parts. So now, we're ready to put our main gear back into position, basically. And so, you need to hold down and press down. Roll your bridge around. Keep pressure on while you do this. And then we got our dog. It goes back into position here on top of that hole, basically. I'll just kind of got off course here. Take your fully threaded screw in the bottom and come up the hole like so. And then we're going to take our dog spring. This is probably the trickiest part, is just getting this dog spring back into position. It's not the easiest thing to do, it's just a thin little piece of metal. Didn't quite do what I needed it to do there. Patience is kind of the, the name of the game with these pieces there, but it should look like that when you're done right there. Just bend it around that little bend right there. And then you roll your, your bridge back around. You hear the snap. That's usually good. 
And we're just going to snug up our, our fully threaded screw here on the bottom. And just kind of gently snug that. And that sounds great. Sounds a lot better than it did. So we'll just continue that process. Fully threaded screw on the bottom. Snug these up like so. Don't want to over tighten those too much. Yeah, that sounds great. The dog sounds really, really good. Very centric is, is working really good, it looks like. And I'm just going to brush just a little bit of blue grease down in here. Like so, just because these parts do move. And that looks pretty good. Okay. So now we're ready to put this back on the rest of the reel, basically. And uh, yeah, I would say that one thing that I like a lot about the 250 is that uh, it it's got uh, it's got pretty good you know, line capacity to it, you know, which is nice. Um, you know, if you're, if you're doing some, some big surf fishing, you know, having that, that capacity is definitely a, a good thing. Having a little trouble turning my thumb screw here for some reason. Sometimes you just need to make sure that, uh, I don't know. So I just had to stop uh, the video there for a moment. And so one uh, little thing to note here, and I think this is a change uh, that Penn made uh, down the road here. So I, I believe that this is definitely an, an older version of this reel, but it's got this little... Uh, kind of copper brass like sleeve uh, right here and if it sticks out too far then it prevents you from getting into that hole right there so I think this this needs to be threaded a little farther up the um, the screw but basically that's a stopper to prevent this screw from coming out and so you just need to make sure that that's that's backed off enough in there so that it's not uh, impeding your uh, your thread essentially so it should go back in now real solid yeah okay all right so we're just gonna push on here finish this up but yeah the fact that this has got really good uh, line capacity it doesn't have that high ratio gear set like the jig master does um, but you know sometimes you don't need that sometimes you don't want it for that matter if you're just doing some some standard fishing where you're not doing a lot of casting and retrieving and stuff like that then then this reel is is fine uh, for that kind of stuff and uh, and probably somewhat cheaper although i will admit the jig master is still made uh, today and just because of that, it, it's probably a little, uh, a little bit more, uh, you know, cheaper than this, just because these are more rare now. Like I said, they only offered these up until the late '70s. So um, I'm just going to clean up the handle here. You know, the handle's in really good shape. It's got this beautiful kind of olive green-like uh, Bakelite old-school handle, and it's actually stamped a B here. On the rear so that definitely is an indicator that this is an older older model for sure so I'm just gonna hit a little bit of power lube inside the shaft of the handle there and let that work its way in basically Just 
Star wheel looks looks real clean. I'm just going to do a little bit of blue grease right here on these threads just to help start those threads on there basically. Sometimes they're hard to get started, but there we go. We'll put our handle back into position. So, yeah, having good, clean pieces and parts really make for, for better fishing. So, you know, that's why I like to take, uh, take the time to go to the extremes to, to go through all these details as much as I possibly can. It's just a part of the service as far as I'm concerned, standard or should be somewhat standard. Seeing a little bit of extra gunk on there that I'd like to see disappear. There we go. But yeah, the fact that we haven't had to do a lot of chrome cleaning or a lot of polishing and stuff like that, that really does make a big difference on the time factor, of course. So snug that up just a little bit. And we'll do just a little bead of oil in this thread right here, which I really like to do because this is such a tiny, tiny little set screw. Very, very easy for those threads to get damaged. And if if that gets damaged, then you know you're you're pretty much gonna junk the handle at a certain point and have to replace it with a different one. Okay, well, we'll have a look, we'll see what we got here, but sounds real, real nice and a lot smoother than it was for sure. Um, I'm just going to kind of double check this here. One thing I'll, I'll do here is I'll just do a little bead of, of oil on these threads just because this is so dried in here, it hasn't been used in so long. Just to kind of help make that screw on there a little better. Yeah, that feels great though. We got really good free spool going on there, so that's great. Test our clicker out. Very strong clicker for sure. So. So there you have it. That's the Penn Surfmaster Model 250 all cleaned up, serviced, and ready to go. So thanks again for watching. This is Tony with Back on the Bench. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And we'll see you next time.